Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today I am back with six more fall DIYs. These are easy to make and look great. So let's get into it. Our first project for today is this little thankful house using the wood house shape from Dollar Tree, a pumpkin shape, a wood domino, some jute twine, and some scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to go ahead and paint the back and all the sides of this house shape. I just wanted to do this to give my finished product more of a finished look all around whether you were putting this on a shelf or whatnot so once that was dry go ahead and apply a thin layer of Mod Podge to the wood I do spritz a little bit of water on the back of the scrapbook paper and then lay that down on the wood shape pressing it out to make sure there are no air bubbles then I wanted a little tag, so I pulled out this package of the wooden dominoes from Dollar Tree, put some antique wax on it, brushed it on, and then wipe away the excess to have a nice little wood tag. Then once my house was dry, just taking my little fingertip knife and I'm cutting around to get any of the excess scrapbook paper off of the house shape. And there it is with that finished look. Now, I wanted a pumpkin on the front of this. You can use the little gingham one that you can get at Dollar Tree, but it kind of bothered me that the um, little burlap border around it. So I decided to just flip it over and do the same thing as I did with the house. I'm just Mod Podging some black and white gingham scrapbook paper from Hobby Lobby over the backside of the pumpkin. And then once that's dry, using that same fingertip knife to cut around the excess. And then I did also take a sanding sponge to sand the edges to give them a little bit of a worn look. Next, taking one of my Elmer's paint markers from Walmart, I'm just going to go around with white and outline my pumpkin, give it a few lines in the middle to make it look more dimensional like an actual pumpkin. Then taking a brown paint marker, I'm going to go ahead and paint the stem. And then we'll give that some accents with a black paint marker as well. Then coming back to my tag, I'm just going to freehand the word thankful with my fine tip white paint marker. If you don't want to write the word, you could always use letter stickers or cut vinyl if you have the means to do so. Now coming back to my house, I'm gonna just put a little dot of hot glue on the back and just for an accent, wrap my jute twine about four times around the house just to make a little line there where the roof starts to go up. And this is just gonna be kind of where we attach the tag to make it look like it is tied around the house. Once I have my little tag where I think I want it, I'm gonna tie a small little bow using my jute twine. This will also accent on top of the tag to again, look like it's tied to where that jute twine is. So I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue my tag in place and then glue that small little bow right on top of the tag as well. And then we will glue our pumpkin in place on the house. And here's our finished look, very simple. And I will say too, you could do a similar decoration on the backside 
and make the tag go off the other way. DIY number two is a pizza pan wreath. I've got a couple different sizes of trays here, some ribbon, these window clings from Dollar Tree, and some nautical rope. So I decided to use the pizza pan, but I'm using the back side of the pizza pan, and I did spray paint this white. And then just kind of using this big blue truck, I thought this was completely cute with the pumpkins in the back. And I know I've done these before, but I just wanted to show you again how simple this is to take just a couple items from Dollar Tree and make something you can hang in your home for the fall. So go ahead and put a light layer of Mod Podge on that back raised section and then start placing your clings down where you want them. And you'll just want to rub them gently just to make sure you get out any air bubbles before it dries completely. So I loved the script also of the wording Hello Fall with that blue truck. And then we'll also add in some of the leaves and pumpkins as well. Once all of our pieces were down and dried completely, I did take some more matte finish Mod Podge and brushed a light layer over the entire surface of the pizza pan just to make sure none of the clings came off. Then once that was dry, the reason I like using the back side of the pizza pan is you have a nice little space here to go ahead and glue your nautical rope or whatever you want to glue going around the circle. So here I'm just using the nautical rope, hot gluing it all the way around, and then we'll go ahead and trim that excess off. Now here I'm going to make another simple kind of bow. So first I have a loop and then just a straight piece. And then we're going to again use our jute twine to um, tie that all together. Just knot it a few times in the center. And then you're going to have a cute easy bow but also two tails that are all attached. And if you use the wired ribbon, you can really um, manipulate it to lay how you want. Although I did realize the tails were a little too long for covering up the wording. So I just made them a little shorter and then went ahead and dovetailed them just so they were not going to cover up the hello fall once I had that glued at the top there. So just take some hot glue, glue it at the very top center of your pizza pan or you might choose to do your bow at the bottom either way. And then I'm just tying a very simple hanging string here. I'm gonna glue it to the nautical rope, but behind the ribbon so that it's hidden. And then your sign or your wreath will be ready to hang. I love using these pizza pans to make signs. One tip is to make sure you use a spray paint that will stick to metal. Otherwise, use Mod Podge and chalk paint. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time, I really hope you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. And I encourage everyone to hit the bell and check your notifications. Some people have been having problems being notified of my new uploads. For DIY number three, we're going to make a fall fence display using some five gallon paint stir sticks, a couple of these shelf signs, some various size pumpkins, and this sunflower hanging sign from Dollar Tree. So two packages of paint sticks is six, and I'm gonna go ahead, my first step is just to do a real kind of messy paint job, not completely covering the wood grain on all six of the paint sticks. Then I'm gonna keep five of them for the sign and with my sixth one, I'm just going to cut it in half. These will be my two pieces that I glue to the back to keep the other five pieces together. So here you can see 
I'm just laying them out. And I also want my fence to be just the same width as one of those long 12 inch um, shelf pieces there that you can see to the right. So I'm gonna go ahead and use wood glue to glue my two cross pieces down and just kind of weight those down until they're dry. Then taking these two tabletop signs, I'm gonna just wood glue them together, use my clamps so that they're going to be completely flat and let everything dry completely. Now, once those were dry, I'm just gonna take some painter's tape and I like the wood grain around the edges, but I just wanna paint over the wording on the top. So I'm just gonna use some of that painter's tape and then use this Martha Stewart paint in Lagoon, it's just a teal kind of uh, bluish green, and I'm gonna do two coats to cover up the wording. Then once my fence is dry, I'm gonna use my truffle chalk paint and just dry brush on here and just keep painting and then sanding with my sanding sponge just to get the worn look that I'm going for and just kind of blend everything in together. Then once I took my three pieces of the hanging sign apart, I'm gonna take that same truffle paint and sanding sponge and just kind of give these more of a worn, um, less shiny look. So just dry brushing the brown and then kind of sanding it. And I'm going to do this to all three pieces from this sign before we go ahead and glue them to the fence. So that's what we're going to do next. You can see I have them just kind of going different directions here on the fence and I wanna make sure my pumpkins one is high enough up so that I have some space at the bottom. So once those three are on there, now I'm gonna glue on my little platform that we made using the two tabletop signs that we painted green on the top and I have this standing up just so I can get it nice and flat. Now, I ended up deciding to take this moss sheet and going ahead and cutting it apart so that it completely um, covered my base here. I'm still glad I painted it teal just in case um, any white or wordings would show through. But anyway, I'm using the moss sheet and then I have this cute little pumpkin container from Dollar General. Um, I'm gonna use this because I like the size, but I'm going to use my Moss Waverly Chalk Paint because I want it to be that nice sage green color for my display. Then using two of the small hay bales from Dollar Tree, I'm going to glue two of them side by side just to give a little bit larger of a raised area here on our display. And then I'm just gonna play. I'm gonna start adding in some of the different pumpkins I have from Dollar Tree, some of these little gourds, I don't even know where I got those from, some little tiny sunflowers, and some different leaves from some floral picks. So this makes a great display. Right now I have this next to my fireplace because it's a nice large size. This would look great also on your porch or if you have a really tall um, shelf maybe above your kitchen cupboards. But I was really pleased, this is about two feet tall, so it's a really nice size, and was just a lot of fun to just put all these pieces together and just glue them together as I went. And here's a final look. You can see I also glued a couple of leaves at the top there, that's completely optional. But you can just see how you can totally make this project your own and have a lot of fun with it. If you like what you're seeing in this video, I hope you'll give this video a thumbs up. It really does help me to grow my channel and reach more people on YouTube. For DIY number four, I'm going to make a porch welcome sign using seven of these wood 3D pumpkins, two packs of the five gallon paint sticks, a metal bucket, and some ribbon. 
So like I said, I have seven of these. I'm gonna spell out the word welcome. I'm going to use my mineral chalk paint to paint the base of each pumpkin. And then I'm going to use orange and teal for the three raised areas on the pumpkin. So first thing I had to do was remove the hangers and the raffia bows, and then go ahead and paint the flat or the base section with the mineral chalk paint. Now I will say you've seen me use these pumpkins before where I Mod Podge paper on the front. That would actually be easier because you wouldn't have to be as careful with your base paint like where I painted the gray and then you would just Mod Podge the paper. But because I'm just using paint, I had to be kind of careful going around the edges. But still, this was not difficult to do. It took a little bit of time, but like I said, it was pretty easy. And I hope you'll agree that the finished product was definitely worth the time. So of these seven pumpkins, I did four of them with teal in the middle or on the raised sections and three with orange. Then I just went on my computer and found a font I liked and I spelled out welcome using capital letters. Then using my carbon tracing paper and my stylus, I'm just going to trace those letters onto that center section of each of my pumpkins. I'm gonna go back and forth, teal, orange, teal, orange, teal, orange, teal, spelling welcome. Now, of course, if you have big stickers or can cut vinyl, you can do that. But you guys know on my channel, I like to show alternatives to that. So use the carbon tracing paper, use these Elmer's paint markers from Walmart. They're awesome. That's all I'm doing is outlining what I traced and then just filling in the spaces. And here's what the letters look like. Takes longer than vinyl, but a heck of a lot cheaper. So then once I have all the pumpkins done, I'm going to layer them on top of each other using wood glue and hot glue combination. You can see I am putting the W for welcome, gluing that to the front of the stem of the E. And I'm gonna keep doing that going all the way down the word. So now the L stem is gonna go behind the E and so on and so forth, just keeping them as straight as possible until I have my entire word there. And you can see I have those paint sticks there as well. I'm gonna glue those on the back to make this be able to stand and be very, very sturdy. Then I took some Spanish moss and glued a little bit of that where each of the pumpkins meet up. Then taking some of the black and white gingham wired ribbon from Dollar Tree, I'm just going to make a loop and tie that together in the center with some jute twine. This one will not have tails, it's just going to be the bow. And then just kind of fluff it out a little bit, get it shaped how you want it. And I am going to make a little strip of the burlap ribbon that I'm going to tie around the center to cover up the jute string. So don't worry about my fingers, it's a low temp. Um, hot glue and then I'm gonna glue that wrap it around the bow part and then we'll get that glued onto the stem of our very top pumpkin I also took my orange gingham ribbon from Hobby Lobby to make a small bow and we're gonna glue that on top of the larger bow and here's what it looks like at the top and then now I get to show you where this is on my porch. It stands pretty tall. I have it in the metal bucket. And then I have a, a gingham scarf tied around the base of the paint stick so you can't see that. And I do have it standing in a corner. But this thing is, oh, I think it's taller than me. So it's got to be like five and a half feet tall about. And I just love how it looks on my porch with my other fall decor that I have out so far. Today's fifth DIY wins the prize for the simplest and easiest, but I love the impact it makes. I just have a $2 garden flag from Dollar General and four five gallon paint sticks. Now these come out pretty wrinkly, but isn't that image so gorgeous? I could not pass this up for $2. So what I'm gonna do, I am going to iron that, but right now I'm measuring how long I need to cut 
my paint sticks. These are already painted antique wax. You don't need to see me do that again. So I'm cutting four pieces and they're about 15 inches long. Now you can see I just used a cool iron and I ironed out that flag. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to glue a paint stick to the top. Now the top was a little uneven, so I'm making it evened out there and I'm just centering it on the garden flag. Once I have it pressed down, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna glue another one, kind of sandwiching the garden flag in between. So it's gonna hang from the center of these two paint sticks. So we're gonna do this at the top and also at the bottom. It's gonna make kind of a scroll looking type sign. So once I had all four of the paint sticks in place, I'm gonna take some jute twine and just tie a knot on either side at the top there. And this will be used to hang our sign. And then we will add one more finishing touch before we are finished. So lastly, just to add a little dimension and bring in some of the fall leaves that are on the image, I just have some of these leaves from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna glue a couple of them on either side and it helps cover up where the string is tied around. So here it is. I just loved this give thanks with the pumpkins. So cute and you can make this with any flag. I had such a great response to my last giveaway that I am going to give away two more of the Farm Fresh 2022 calendars. These have some great cute images that can be used for DIYs, the small ones on the back, as well as the full size versions for each month. So if you want to be entered into this giveaway, please be sure to comment at the end of this video which of these projects was your favorite. And our final project for today is a wood crate with vases. I'm going to make this for fall, but this is something you could take and make very neutral to be able to use any time of the year. So just using one of these wood crates from Dollar Tree, I am going to paint it with my antique wax. I just, you guys know already, I just love the dark wood, especially for fall. So just take your time, paint all the areas, and then you'll take a paper towel and wipe away the excess. I did everything I did all around the outside, inside, and the bottom to get my final look for my crate. Then taking some jute twine, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of like we did with the house, I'm going to wrap around like four or five times around this top section of the crate. Again, just to add some more texture and variety and just give it a little more of that farmhouse look. So wrap it around, trim it off, and then just glue down the edge. So there are lots of choices of what words you can put on here. These are from Hobby Lobby. These are from Dollar Tree. You could also use some smaller metal words. Um, so I'm just kind of looking at how each of these look on the crate. I am going to do two. I want to do one on either side. So I decide to do give thanks on one side for fall. And then instead of that welcome fall, I'm gonna do blessed on the other side. So what I did is I just painted them with my white paint marker, and then I'm going to hot glue, like I said, give thanks on one side, and then flip it over and do blessed on the other side. I figured then I could keep this out all year long and just change the florals that go inside. On the blessed side, I did decide to add a black and white gingham ribbon bow this ribbon is from hobby lobby over in their sewing department 
and I just had to trim the tails a little shorter so they wouldn't cover up my words. So just go ahead and hot glue that to this side. And then on the give thanks side, I pulled out my wood um, stickers from Hobby Lobby and just decided to glue two of the pumpkins, one on either side of the word give. For my vases, I'm gonna use two glass bottles I got at a local dollar store. You could use the cute milk bottles that are out. You could even use two recycled Frappuccino bottles. I did spray paint them with this dark green I had on hand. It was called Peacock. And then wanted to lighten them up a little bit, so I'm using that Moss Waverly chalk paint again. Um, but I didn't like how you could see all the brush strokes, so I just got a damp paper towel. And you can see if I rub over that chalk paint, it just kind of blends it in and you can see the difference there. So just a slightly different technique for what I wanted with the paint. And I really like how they ended up just kind of with that smeared lighter green paint. Then taking my jute twine, I am going to wrap some around the top of each of my two vases. And here's the finished look just with some fall florals from Dollar Tree. Again, you can change this out with different colored vases and different florals for whatever season. Thanks again so much for watching today and for all the love and support that you guys give me each week on my uploads. I'm really excited with the growth in my channel right now and I just hope you'll consider liking and commenting and sharing my videos so that I can grow even more and be able to continue to bring you new content each and every week. Take care.